Hello, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to learn 7 different additive manufacturing or 3D printing processes such as MGF, FDM, SLS, SLA, SLM, DLLs, DLS, and Polyjet. Those technologies vary with materials, applications, easiness, expensive, etc. So, the main goal of this video is to differentiate between them so that you can choose the best technology for your project. Number 1. Multi-Jet Fusion or MGF FDM uses additive manufacturing technology in which the model is printed layer by layer on top of each to produce the right 3D model. The nozzle goes through a particular path to make 2D layers on top of the previous layer. This will result in giving a good finish to the 3D model. FDM technology is widely known as the simplest form of 3D printing technology. This method is very popular globally as it is affordable by people who uses 3D printing technology as a hobby. Most designers start their careers with this FDM technology. It works by loading thermoplastic filament into the 3D printer. When the nozzle becomes the right temperature the thermoplastic filament is fed into the nozzle, which is attached to a 3-axis system that can move in X, Y, and Z axis which helps it to make the object layer by layer. FDM method has some benefits such as it being the most effective way of printing parts and prototypes. A large range of thermoplastics are available for this technology, very less time-consuming compared to others, and easy to get materials for this method. But this FDM method also has some limitations such as the print quality of FDM 3D prints is not as good as other 3D printing technologies as there will be layer lines and all visible chances of causing voids during 3D printing. Models printed from FDM are not airtight and watertight, and complex objects are difficult to print using the FDM method. Number 2. Stereolithography or SLA It is one of the oldest methods of 3D printing technology. SLA method uses the laser to harden the liquid resin present in the reservoir, or we can tell that this process covers photosensitive liquids into solid plastics in the layer-by-layer -layer method. They use light-sensitive thermoset materials called resins to solidify them to print parts. When SLA, resins are exposed to certain wavelengths of light, short molecular chains join together, polymerizing monomers and oligomers into solidified rigid or flexible geometries. Examples of materials used in the SLA method are tough, standard, flexible, transparent, and castable resins. This method works by slicing a 3D model into 2D layers using a program. A tank is filled with liquid photopolymer resin, which will be solidified to produce the part. Then a build platform is lowered into the tank and one layer of the design is traced by a UV laser. Then the laser is positioned using galvanometers which are sets of mirrors that rotate and reflect the laser to help the 3D printer to print layer by layer. In the end, the liquid resin hardens into a solid creating layers of the object. This process is repeated and the build platform raises until the object completes the printing. SLA method has some benefits, such as giving very high quality and smooth surface for the resulting printed part, low material consumption, the ability to produce both rigid and flexible parts, customized coloring, and multi-part assemblies that are possible to print in one run. But it also has limitations such as depending on the material, parts may be brittle, Support structures can be limited to design freedom. Components are UV resistant to a limited extent. Liquid resins are wet, sticky, and hazardous, and the smell of the resin. Number 3. 
Number 3. Selective Laser Sintering or SLS SLS uses the powdered bed method. This one is also an additive manufacturing process. In this method, we use laser light to center the powder to solidify them. The laser will be aimed at the right place in 3D space, and this will help the powder to solidify and form a layer. This method is repeated to form a layer on top of the previous layer until we get the model printed. It works by directing the laser to the powder to form the cross-section of layers. The laser's main purpose is to heat the powder and smelt and solidify it to a specific shape. This process repeats to form each layer on top of the previous one until we get the complete model printed. There are some benefits of using this technology, such as metal parts can be produced directly in this method. A wide selection of materials are available for this method. No additional base support is needed for printing complex models without failures. But it also has some limitations such as the result having a rough surface, the process producing harmful gases, and SLS printed parts having porous surfaces. Number 4. Direct Metal Laser Centering or DLLs DLLs is a process used primarily for metal parts production. It operates similarly to selective laser sintering SLS but with metal powders instead of plastics or polymers. The process begins with a thin layer of metal powder spread evenly across the build platform. A high-powered laser selectively fuses the powder particles together, based on a 3D digital model, creating a solid layer. The build platform then lowers, and a new layer of metal powder is spread over the previous one. This process repeats layer by layer until the entire part is formed. The DLL's technology has some benefits such as it enables the production of high-strength metal parts with complex geometries, making it valuable for aerospace, automotive, and medical applications. And it offers design freedom and can reduce material waste compared to traditional manufacturing methods. But it also has some limitations such as the DLL's equipment and materials are costly, and the process can be slower compared to other metal 3D printing techniques. And the surface roughness and porosity may also be concerns that require additional post-processing steps. Number 5. Multi-Jet Fusion or MGF MGF uses fine filters which helps to give thickness as thin as 80 microns. Therefore, we will get very good quality surfaces. They use laser sintering directly which helps to give smooth surfaces directly outside the printer. The output will have high density and less porosity. The post process will be minimal. It works by using an inkjet array to do the fusing and detailing agents to the bed of nylon powder to build the 3D part, which are then fused by heating elements into a solid layer of cross-section. After each layer, powder is distributed on top of the bed and the process repeats until the model is complete. When the build finishes the entire powder bed with the encapsulated parts is moved to a processing station where most of the loose powder is removed by an integrated vacuum. Parts are then bead blasted to remove any of the remaining residual powder before ultimately reaching the finishing department where they are dyed black to give the better cosmetic appearance. There are some benefits of using this technology such as high production speed compared to others and very high process post-process automation. But there are also some limitations such as there are no ceramic materials available commercially yet, very high performance polymers currently prioritized, and there is a lack of clear information on ceramics AM specifications. Number 6. Polyjet
PolyJet is a powerful 3D printer that gives very smooth, precise, and high-quality surfaces. In PolyJet 3D printers we can print very thin layers up to 0.014 per millimeter which helps to print very complex and high-quality parts. A PolyJet 3D printer works the same as an inkjet printer. Instead of jetting drops of ink, the PolyJet printer jets drops of photopolymer that get solidified when exposed to UV light. These layers will accumulate on the built tray until the part is complete. For complex models with overhangs, the 3D printer jets use a removable gel-like support material. Polyjet materials properties can vary, ranging from rigid to rubber-like. This technology can also mix multiple materials to achieve unique material properties and colors. Polyjet materials are best suited for applications where accuracy, surface finish, and detail are essential components of the printed models. The Polyjet technology has some benefits such as it the most accurate and precise 3D printing technology, which is up to 16 microns. The printed parts surface will be very smooth. They can print multiple parts without time loss compared to other 3D printers. And this printer can use multiple materials for the same model which helps to produce multiple colors for the printed parts but it has some limitations such as they have less mechanical properties compared to others, and it is very expensive for the materials used in this technology. Number 7. Selective Laser Melting or SLM Selective laser melting uses the AM method, which they are mostly used in the 3D printing of metal alloys. It produces the part by fusing metal powder particles together in a full melting process. SLM is used both for rapid prototypes and mass production. An SLM machine has a chamber filled with metal powder which will be used for fusing. This metal powder will be then spread across the substrate or build plate in very thin layers. A high-powered laser will then fuse a 2D slice of the part by selectively melting the powdered material. The build plate then drops down by the height of one layer to start with the next layer, and the coater spreads another layer of fresh powder finely across the surface. The process is repeated until the model is completely printed. There are some benefits of this technology such as very tough metal parts being produced, it can produce accurate surfaces with invisible layer lines, the materials can be easily sterilized using an autoclave, and a wide range of metal materials being available. But it also has some limitations such as relatively new technology compared to others, high cost of machines and materials, inert gas supply required for this technology, and this one is not suitable for well-controlled composite materials. Number 8. Digital Light Synthesis DLS DLS combines digital light projection, oxygen permeable optics, and programmable liquid resins to produce parts. A digital light projector is used to project an image of each layer onto a pool of liquid photopolymer resin. The resin solidifies when exposed to light, forming the desired shape. The DLS has some benefits such as it can produce parts with excellent mechanical properties including high strength and elasticity and it's capable of high-speed printing and can create parts with intricate geometries. But it also has some limitations such as the DLS equipment tends to be expensive, and material costs can also be significant and the parts may require additional curing or post-processing steps to achieve optimal properties. And that's it all, the 8 different additive manufacturing technologies used in the industry. I hope this video is very helpful for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel.
And if you have any question, please write the comment below. Thank you for waxing and see you next time.